Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today we're going to be diving a little bit deeper into Hume AI, specifically looking at how they have tooling and you can actually call out to third party APIs. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to be taking all right, so we're going to be taking a look at Hume. We went through the dashboard uh, last time, and we're going to look at this example for function calling. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is get our environments, but I also want to our uh, keys. But I also want to explain what a tool is. So tooling is just like it is with OpenAI functions, where you're trying to basically get or create an API call and make your uh, prompt or your AI aware that it can actually use these types of tools for um, for calling outside. So different APIs and things like that. Basically, you can see the parameters. You're setting up what objects you might need in order to, uh, in this case, get the weather. This is pretty much a hello world example, so we're just going to go ahead and get uh, right into it. So. Let's go back to the dashboard and get our environment variable or our uh, keys and create a tool and then create a configuration. So if we look over back in the dashboard, we have these API keys. We can just go ahead and copy those. Uh, but then over here and underneath EV is this uh, create a configuration. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say we want a particular kind of voice, masculine or feminine. Uh, and then you can pick which uh, model you want to use, even the custom language models. We're just going to go with the default system so that we don't necessarily have to put any of these in. But they do have, you know, Claude and OpenAI, with both of which have uh, functions inside of them. Um, for right now, I'm just going to leave the, the system prompt empty. We, we can configure that later if we want. So go ahead and add tools. So what we're going to do is we're going to click add, create a new function. And as you can see right here, we need this information from their example. So we'll jump back over. We're going to say our name is this. And we are going to have this description. We'll go ahead and take these parameters. And as you can see, the uh, well, we're getting invalid JSON. So what we can do is actually take this uh, object, and we know that our properties are going to be uh, right here. We need location with a type of string, description, and uh, looks like format. So let's go ahead and put that together real quick, and we'll just uh, do a little copy and paste. What did was take this bit and then actually just told ChatGPT to make it into JSON so that we can just copy and paste. And then here we go. We have our properties, which is location. It's a string. We have a description. We have uh, what our format is going to be, Celsius or Fahrenheit. And uh, that uh, looks like what's required. Again, these are all things that are pretty normal in function calling in, in OpenAI, so it's not too, too different. Go ahead and create that. We now have our function. We can still edit it, and then we'll just go ahead and name our config. We'll just say YouTube. And we'll create our configuration. And so now two things. One, we can actually run this in our playground or we can actually uh, put this ID back into uh, our configuration. So over here, we're going to put the, the ID into our variable. All right, and so now that we have this, make sure that we download this, and we're going to go ahead and actually jump right into the editor and get this started and give it a, a test. So all I've already uh, downloaded this. This is all the information that we need. The only other thing is this geocoding API key. You can actually get that for free through this uh, geomaps site. So you can come in here, just grab an API key. It's free. Uh, and I think you get like 5,000 requests a day. All right. 
So now all we have to do is get our terminal and let's go ahead and get started. We'll notice that in our source, we're actually using the app router and we're gonna take a look at our components, which is the client component and see how this function actually works. So what we're doing is we're saying if tool name weather tool. So one of the first things that we're probably going to need to go back and do is actually change this from get weather tool to just weather tool. But let's keep going and see where our, uh, how we can test this and if we get any errors. So you can see that what's basically happening is we have this handle tool promise and it is looking for the tool name. So you can think about this as you could technically have multiple different tool names and you're only looking for a specific tool. We're actually going to go fetch information based on the argument of what we're actually saying. We'll take our API key. Then we're actually going to take information from the weather.gov to get information about the weather going on. And then we're going to be looking at it. Once we get that, we'll be returning our, our tool response based on the tool call ID and the content that's actually happening through the forecast URL and the JSON that we're expecting to get back. So you can see on the voice provider, last time when we set this up, we were able to actually add a call and that is on tool call, handle tool call. So this is why we're allowed, it's only one call. So this is why we're looking for any time it's looking for a tool, we're actually going to look for this particular name. All right, so let's take a look at our local host and see what we've got. Real quick, everyone, if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps more than you know. And with that, let's get back to it. So we're going to go and test this in our browser. We'll be paying attention to the console, any logs, and even the web sockets that might come back. So the first thing we're going to do is try and start the session. Can you tell me the weather outside in Detroit? I'm currently unable to access the weather tool. All right, perfect. So we want to kind of see what the error was. So if we look here, we see that we've got the tool and we're getting this call. It's recognizing that this is our tool because this is the name that we put in and it's able to pass the parameters correctly. But the problem is, is that we are unable to get the response. And that's because of what we thought, which is this this name here is different than what we had in our dashboard. So let's go back and switch a couple of things. So the first thing we're gonna do is go back to our configuration. We can edit uh, both our tool. I'm gonna change to GPT 3.5. I put in a sample prompt and I am going to update the code in here to get our tool. So now let's go ahead and restart and we'll... All right, so let's start again. Can you tell me the temperature outside in Detroit? The current temperature in Detroit is 65 F. All right, cool. So what happened this time is you can actually see that we're able to actually call the function itself. We're getting the uh, the area the area we're getting the forecast, and then we're actually able to see the tool received, and we are able to see what the uh, the the tool is actually returning, the parameters that we sent, the call ID, and pull all this information back. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually test this in the playground. So if we take this information and we go back to our uh, dashboard, we can actually test it here as well. So if we click the run in the playground, then all we need to do is get an example of that weather. So they actually have, all right, so we're gonna take this and we're just gonna copy it, start our call. Let's, so let's start our call. Can you give me the current temperature? Sure thing. 
All right, so now it's actually look like it's recognizing our voice. And we can actually send a response. So here's the response we're going to send. We can also send an error response, and it'll reply accordingly. So what's interesting about this is that you can see it's trying to send it here. So what's interesting, it's actually able to, uh, via text, either get a success or a failure and able to test this in the dashboard, which is pretty interesting. So not only can we test this through a code in our Next.js application, we can test it in the uh, dashboard as well. And we could even test this just sending like post requests uh, back and forth through the API. All right, that's it for us today, everyone. What we looked at was HumeAI and specifically how they have tools, which are very similar to how we've seen other third party uh, APIs being called in, in AI. So with that, happy nerding.